And hello, welcome to the Hinge Games live stream. So tonight we are talking about what do we have? Oh, I don't have the I don't have the notes open. We're talking about <laughs> uh, we have one week left. Next Monday, we're shipping. We're out in early access. We're gonna we're gonna play a bit of the game. Uh, we got Jeff on here. He doesn't know very much about it, so he's gonna be sort of the audience surrogate, asking questions about. The last few few streams, like Jacques and I have just been talking about super specific detailed things that are completely obscure to anybody who doesn't know what the game is. So now we're going to take a step back. That's, it. That's why you have value, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> when you look this good, you don't need to know nothing. <laughs> hey, when you sound that sexy, like you have a great voice, man. <laughs> man, yeah. We got a face for radio too, so. <laughs> all right, and uh, and then yeah, we we put out our builder trailer today. We shared it on all the socials. If you're watching this, you've probably seen it. Uh, yeah, uh, Jacques, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Uh, so this week I worked on uh, Neath, kind of like sort of our mascot for the game, and then I also worked on uh, what is it? Just some lighting variety, but yeah, mostly Neath. And I did a bit of uh, just reaching out to social media stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. it was a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were like, okay, yeah, let's put out the trailer at 10 a.m. All right, what's the plan for that? Oh, we didn't we didn't really bang out any details. Yeah, right? so like, just, just for the people who are working in comm dev and marketing, it's not that we discount what the what you guys bring it's just we clear we just don't have the, the budget or the manpower to be able to do that so we're just doing it on our own as we are with pretty much everything so it's not like mm -hmm. you know so it's just like we it's just two of us trying to figure out the best way to kind of get this thing uh marketed and brought forward i guess yeah. and yeah i'm not sure how much yeah. of that i can i can put forward on the stream though that's the way i oh. kind of put it oh, that's fine. Right there. We, we won't go into too much more uh, yeah. Let me just check. Okay, yeah, that's right. All right, yeah. So, uh, I guess let's start off. Uh, oh, and uh, oh, before that, Julian. Uh, no, <laughs> forget me. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's Actually, fine. like uh, I, I listed a couple things that I, I will mention mm -hmm. quickly, but I don't really have mm -hmm. a topic that I will tackle in depth. You know, that's why I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't need yeah. to introduce oh. the topics because if i if i do i won't have anything to talk about anymore all right all right we'll, we'll, we'll swing back around <laughs> okay well <laughs> do, you, do you want to mention anything now or are we gonna swing back oh sure i can i can do it now for sure right. and then yeah. leave the the best for last right uh, uh, uh well, first sound like... start off strong I, and end on a low note I, and... yeah <laughs> I have a lot of self-confidence in this as you can tell so uh yeah so uh i recently very recently finished the the, the french french translation for the game mm -hmm. and i believe bjorn just implemented it so it's like it will be yeah. in now uh i i noticed after completing it first uh and then trying it in game that some of the words did not exactly match the context so like it's possible that i'll have to mm -hmm. go over that a bit again mm -hmm. uh i've started checking the, the the puzzle builder uh a bit more in in depth uh there's definitely a lot more for me to check in that there's a lot of uh endless possibilities right oh yeah, so, yeah. there's gonna be a lot to try and, and then again like i'm thinking it's almost a feature that you can break the game using the puzzle builder, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's impossible to prevent like every single mm -hmm. possible bug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, in, that's uh, a certain thing, right? Yeah. We have to rely yeah. on players have a certain responsibility in the stuff they make when using exactly. these tools too. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And like, if, if we try to fix it too much, we might, we might reduce the amount of fun players we'll be able to have with. Uh, exactly. Like how, I think, how crazy it can get. I think a great and example that of that was... Part of the fun of that kind of stuff is... Yeah, for sure. Like, seeing uh, how screwed up you can make it. Exactly. Like, one of the bugs uh, uh, Julian sent me this week was basically, like, he built stairs super high and was almost able to get out of the room. But I'm like, yeah, I don't see... Like, he couldn't get out of the room. So, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, as long as you can't actually bypass the puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, like, if you design a puzzle, like, 
it wouldn't even break anything because it's like, well, if you design a puzzle that the way you finish it is by climbing a set of stairs and going over the door, that doesn't break anything. Because <laughs> if you uh, put that in, in your dungeon... inside the box. <laughs> yeah, but then the door remains locked, man. You can't come back from that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, you can exit yeah. the dungeon from, uh, from the if pause menu. You can um, basically... <laughs> No, no, you don't need to do that. But basically, if you... Whatever... Um, the doors are only locked from the inside for the puzzle rooms. Oh. So if you get Smart. over that door into the next room, you can come back and it'll just open up when you approach. Smart. Yeah. So that won't, wouldn't break anything. If you designed a puzzle that worked that way, that is something we could even do. The reason we don't is because you can jump over... Well, even then, if you jumped over the edge of the wall and fell into the void there's we have something called a safe fall component which basically it tracks when there's solid ground beneath your feet and it saves that location that you're at and so if you fall yeah. into the void it'll be like well you've been falling for 20 seconds it's not 20 seconds but you know after <laughs> x amount of time it's like well you're clearly not going to hit the ground anytime soon what was where was the last safe place you were okay we'll teleport you back there how much time in limbo are you going to force these players to endure? <laughs> have, they need to take at least two breaths in between screaming. That's yeah, <laughs> five that's, minutes. That's cool. <laughs> ah! That scene from Thor Ragnarok. I've been falling oh. for thirty minutes. <laughs> exactly. That's what we want. <laughs> but we need to get the players to to scream. That's that's how you can teleport back. We're going to yeah. integrate. Oh, it's, they don't. Too bad Voice Microsoft demand. discontinued the Connect. Oh my God. Because uh, we just have, like, in order to stop falling, you need to start screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <Yeah. post> that. <laughs> that's kind that's of a mechanic that happened in a Nintendo game, wasn't it? Like, they had that stuff where, like, in the. And, uh, the oh, on the, on the game, you had to, like, blow into the stupid hole and you had to, like, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, to, and... to inflate a balloon and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah, screaming yeah. would be the next thing they have. It's yeah. uh, it's back on PS5 actually. There's a microphone in the PS5 uh, controller, controller, and you can use that yeah. to interact with the games. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know personally. I don't know why they are doing that because I've never found it fun to There's... be like blowing in is... the controller to a balloon. The, yeah, I think like usually that stuff ends up being a mandate from Sony to be like, all right, you have to use this or they'll give you the they'll they'll have some kind of incentive or they'll they'll do something that like i don't know like some producer or executive somewhere says okay yeah sony's gonna give us a million dollars to to use this the microphone on the controller so we have to figure out a way to use it what happened to that million dollars oh it's going to the marketing budget like it doesn't go to development or anything but so usually that happens and the thing is i think it's a good idea to have a microphone on the controller but only because like on PS4, I played multiplayer with friends, and my Bluetooth headset wasn't compatible with my PS4. So I just love to have a microphone oh. there that, like, oh, yeah. that'd be great. I don't need gameplay incorporated into it. Yeah, so not for any <laughs> purpose that they designed it for. for no, but it's, it's useful. That's super useful for anybody that wants to play. Yeah. yeah, I played Monster Hunter with a bunch of friends, and yeah. I had to get another <laughs> microphone. <laughs> uh, but we're getting a little sidetracked here. Uh, J a little, uh, a little. JV, fi uh, Julian, JV finished uh, the oh, French yeah, translation, however. but we yes. also got all of these other languages. So we got German, <laughs> we got Italian, we got Portuguese, we got we got two ty types of Chinese, Chinese traditional and Chinese uh, simplified. We got Korean and we got Japanese. Nice. So we're, and those are all integrated. Many of them might have the same problem with the that, a way uh, to confirm <laughs> that everything works like in the context. Yeah, exactly. Like it might be the right, it might be the wrong context. We we wrote up a document to try and explain, like, oh yeah, this is when, like, we say push in this scenario. This is what it actually is and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, you know, we'll we'll see. Oh wait, I'm not. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna switch it back to English. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, we'll start from the beginning. Doing... Oh, you're not done? Oh, you still won't... Okay, yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I, I started looking at the keyboard and mouse uh, controls today mm -hmm. because, uh, oh, yeah. uh, like, we were talking about it. Like, we yeah. 
I feel like if people really want to play with keyboard and mouse, even though it's not uh, recommended, uh, we should make sure that it's actually at least like functional, right? Yeah. Uh, and it turns out it isn't. <laughs> no. Okay. It's. It, I mean, it, it works, but there's a lot of okay. bugs, man. I don't know if you looked yeah. at Jira in the last hour, but uh, it, oh, okay. I'll I, take a look. I, I made it implode. Or okay. Explode, I should say. Cool. Mm. All right. Yeah, because I know there were a lot Other... of bugs with the um, dungeon builder. Or the, yeah, I'm not even the, there yet. The builders and stuff. Oh, yeah. Boy. Okay. That's I, interesting. I am not in the builder yet. <laughs> All right. I'll take a look. <laughs> My personal opinion is I, I get the feeling it actually worked pretty well with a builder. I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is with the builder, it gets a few different. Uh, you can get into some weird states that can cause bugs. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's probably mm -hmm. it might be a global thing because yeah, a couple of menus where uh, mm -hmm. when you try to click some some UI options, it doesn't actually mm -hmm. work, and it looks like it's uh, moving where the keyboard selection is i don't know if that made any sense but like using your arrows in a certain context will do something that it's meant to do but if you click elsewhere then the keyboard stops working as mm -hmm. intended if that makes any sense okay but that's in the builder not in the regular game uh it is in the regular game in the main yeah. menu and a couple of places yeah oh, okay. that's why i'm saying it All might right. be a global yeah. issue yeah when you okay. try to combine uh mouse controls and the keyboard sometimes it mm -hmm. messes things up okay mm -hmm. yeah, see. um also like i'll i'll wrap up quick here i've contacted mm -hmm. a bunch of streamers i've started getting some confirmations i've invited you to to uh like their their mm -hmm. their their schedule when they think they're going to be streaming the game well it should happen mm -hmm. like they've confirmed to me but you never know yeah yeah, yeah i noticed uh, i so what is it just like we'll be in the chat for most of those or yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody okay. like I, I suggested if they wanted to have you on a call or something, but mm -hmm. uh, they don't seem to be comfortable with the idea. That's, okay. that's fine. Uh, the thing is, because I saw some of those are like three hours, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to be on a three hour call. They, they, yeah, that's there's that too, yeah. right? Yeah, some of them are that's long. The, that thing is like you always pick times that like my kid is awake. <laughs> it's so, it's like, oh yeah, you're gonna go right on at three. I'm like, oh yeah, good luck with that. Three o'clock on Sunday. Uh, you'll have a little kid screaming in the back here, "Daddy, Daddy, I'm showing my dinosaur." Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, yeah, ultimately, I, I've given like um, Steam keys, Steam mm -hmm. codes to a couple of people, and I've gotten, I've started getting a couple of feedback back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I will, I will try to, to like compile all of those into one single document, so I don't spam you like mm -hmm. every time t someone tells me one thing. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that. That's me. The last cool. couple of days. Invaluable feedback. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Uh so, all right, let's uh, start talking to Jeff. Do you have any questions off the bat? None whatsoever. No one's ever. All right. So you don't so know what the, the game is. Unprepared. All right. I, that's perfect. I, only based on the stuff that I've the, on the that you have written on the Steam page mm -hmm. for it. Okay. Hundred percent. I mean, you all could right. be asking, "What is the game?" and it would be a valid question. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what they're going to answer anyway. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. If I didn't ask that and they just ended the stream right now, it'd be pretty depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ooh. Like, just really, okay, yeah, because I don't have the right file checked out right now for the uh, early access, but that's all we're going over anyway. So, Trial Island, basically, we're not doing the campaign for early access. That's uh, the story mode is uh, going to be coming later. Right now, there's right. just like a crash course and some tutorials. So, we'll jump mm -hmm. into that. Save, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, one of the cool things, so we have procedurally made dungeons, uh, that's part of the game, and then we also have uh, player-made dungeons. So, like, you can make your own dungeons in this, and then upload them to a site called mod.io, and then the game, basically, in the demo, like, when you go into the, the dungeon that's in the demo, it's at the end of this little video. Uh, let me just switch, actually, so you can see more the screen. There we go. So there's a little dungeon at the end of this uh, little video that it plays through the main menu. Uh, when you go in there, it'll just kind of um, invisibly 
behind the scenes download just one of the latest top rated dungeons from the site and just load it in oh, really? for you automatically yeah so i'll put that That's on cool. it there is uh a new character I'll just hit A through everything. It randomizes your character, but you can, well, I guess I'm showing you stuff, so it's like, yeah, you can pick, like, uh, <laughs> like male or female. Uh, a bunch of different skin tones. Right on. Yeah. A few different hairstyles. We're going to add a, I think, I think the plan drop was, like, eight total yeah. hairstyles. Yeah, but that's... Including just straight bald. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Faux hot. It all looked really stupid until I, I realized it looked awesome on one particular combination. So I'm like, yeah, that's the one we're going to show in screenshots. <laughs> the, the Dora Milaje one. Yeah, yeah you're for not, a minute not, you were looking like Dora Milaje for real. Yeah. 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 You don't get yeah, you don't get the uh, you don't get uh, blue hair in any of the screenshots or the videos. That's that would be yeah. my goal. I think Gary put the purple hair in there. So <laughs> in the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just take that and fire. Oh, I'll, uh, we'll call it Jeff. Oh, good. <laughs> there we go. Done. So yeah, it's one to four player drop in, drop out. So there were slots there for players uh, two to two to four. Does the difficulty scale based on how many people are in? Uh, yes, but we haven't tested it, so I don't know how balanced it is. Oh, okay. That's been one of the tough things, like, I was telling, ooh, gotta fix that, uh, quote in the bracket at the end of that. I don't know why it's there. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I there's just some quick tutorials the here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the doc isn't where you have to change it. You have to change it in the Unreal I know. file. I know, I know, I know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so just crash course with tutorials. And yeah, it's one of the problems we've been having is like capturing footage of multiplayer. Because I was like yeah. trying to hold multiple controllers at the same time and get players running and stuff like that. It just looks <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have kind of a stealth system. Like if you avoid these guys, you don't have to get into a fight. But for the purposes of showing you what's going on, get into a quick fight. And it's basically dual stick shooter controls for the most part, if you want to do ranged. Right uh, but then if you hold down the trigger button, you go into melee mode. And you, walk around like that. and you do a lot more damage, but obviously you move a lot slower. And That's then, cool. yeah, and then we have a, like, there's a lot, like the, there's a lot of complexity in the combat system. So like mm -hmm. enemies can block. And there are certain combos you can do on the dual analog sticks. So, like, if I do like that, and then a 360, I do a spin spiral thing that, like, shoots out a bunch of extra things. And I'm actually missing a tutorial here. I'm not sure if we, I, we should probably put it. Uh, I hit a, so if you hit a guy, it starts combat. Like, that guy was on patrol, and I shot him from off screen, and then he's like, oh, yeah. well, screw you, man. Well, it's, it's, nice. it's yeah. on now. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a bunch of different, uh, like, so yeah, this is one of the attacks you can do. And those projectiles stick in the ground and they block enemy movement. So that guy's trapped in there right now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And yeah, these guys block. So like if he's blocking, I can do... So there's there's uh, melee moves that you can do like that and range moves. So if I go melee, I can do that side slash. And then there's other ones like the... There's thousand pokes. There's, there's I think there's like 14 different combos total you can do with the, the analog sticks. That's really cool. Yeah. And you can see the green bar, there's my stamina, so doing combos takes up stamina. Right. So I can't do anything. And then I leveled up, so I'm going to put some points into stamina. And when you level up, you just use the, the D-pad to like go left, right, and then up to assign points. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, all these guys... Give you instructions, but you can also hit them and see how much damage you do. And there's a little train hall down here if you want to learn more moves. Are there different so, weapons that you can use, or is it always the staff? Uh, there's three melee weapons and three ranged weapons. So right now I have the spear as my melee, and the javelin as my range. And they right. have more or less the same moves but they kind of behave a bit differently like the uh there's a few things that behave like 
because we want like sort of a, a certain amount of consistency between all the different weapons so you're not you're not when you pick up a new one it's not like completely different but yeah. so like the, there's dual swords where you just kind of zip around really fast uh and then there's a heavy sword that it starts off super slow and then over the course of 15 seconds it builds up speed and like it does way more damage but it just starts off really slow at the start so you want to build it up and stay in melee right. mode for as long as possible while you're using that and then there's stuff with uh like the uh with the ranged ones like because when you do a uh a, a combo it always shoots the same number of projectiles so there's yeah. the, the cannon which shoots at a much slower rate uh but then if you do so if but all the projectiles do more damage so when you do a combo all those projectiles just do way more damage right like if you're shooting 10 projectiles right. combo. and then there's the crossbow which has uh another ability that basically like it shoots twice as fast but it still shoots the same number of projectiles so combos will do less damage but you'll be right. shooting uh a lot more and it has another ability that like basically a lot more often yes yeah. And, uh, like, you can shoot... It has another thing where it's, like, you can shoot behind you as well. So, like, you basically... It's like you're holding two guns and you're, like, spreading them out. Like, one either way, right? Death Blossom. Exactly. That was actually the original <laughs> name for that move. I think it was oh, Death really? Blossom. Yeah. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Kind of looks like a Death Blossom yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah, this is the dungeon. Uh, and when you go down... Because I... I selected player main dungeons, I think, but your first one is always a procedural dungeon, and you play through it once. Uh, you get to the you get the treasure at the end, and then you warp out, and uh, and then you can start playing. Ooh, I left some debug stuff on. That's uh, I'll have to get rid of that. I think that might even yeah, be the I Steam. I don't know build. anything about this stuff, so I just assumed those were just pretty lights. <laughs> okay, yeah. If anybody <laughs> asks, those are pretty lights. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Christmas lights. <laughs> yeah. Actually, those won't be in the Steam build because they're debug stuff, so and that gets excluded from package build or yeah, oh. package builds. Because I'm playing in the editor right now. So. Let's see. Yeah, little puzzle here. Step on some blocks and rotate some things. By the way, this is harder than it looks. Bjorn whips through them really easily, but yeah. I'll be here for like. <laughs> 10, 15 minutes at a time to try and figure them out. So, yeah, he's yeah. Done them. maybe, so maybe. how easy this looks. Yeah. It's not that easy. I don't understand <laughs> how, how you did this, Bjorn. <laughs> well, then again, I mean, you, you designed it so you understand yeah. it better, I guess. But I, yeah. I just, I usually I cheese it. I, I just jump across the gaps. I don't uh, try to. <laughs> yeah. That was, ooh, how much money do I have? Oh, I don't have enough for the honey. I don't have enough for anything in here. Meat. Use the debug. Donut. Ah, that's feel right. I, I, could, I could buy a donut. There we go. A a bonus to move speed? Yep. You know, I've never eaten a donut and felt like running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of, all yeah, of those right really now are just like, we bought a bunch of low poly food assets and then it was just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> these, are, these are the bonuses we want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we'll do a pass later we're gonna we're gonna do uh like a, a better pass with like a bunch of jock is quite the foodie so he's gonna mm. he's gonna pick a bunch of foods and like oh i love this thing we even have a character in the main game that's kind of based on jock where he's like oh if you're going to this because like you go to a bunch of different realms based on different mythologies and the character yeah. based on jock is gonna be like oh you're going there oh you gotta try this food it's amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are chickens to die for <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, and if you can kill the guy before he notices you, you can like that's a point. You don't combat. alert the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, you have one shot kill. It's yeah, so nice. Yeah. yeah I think uh, you have like a little over a second. Yeah. Before they alert everybody and combat starts. What's the little hammer on top of their head? It's just like the countdown to. Uh, that's supposed to be an exclamation point, but we didn't have one oh. in the database, so I just put a hammer. Right. That's yeah. that's a lot of things. I'm just gonna say anything in our game that doesn't make sense, it was probably something like that. Like when I open up the treasure chest, it's going to be a mace uh that pops out uh when yeah. I get the treasure at the end of the dungeon. And that's because that was just like, well, we don't have the dual swords or anything, so I'll just put in a mace. Even if it says even if it says I got a helmet, it'll be a mace. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. It's the generic. Uh, this is you got an item. Yeah. Exactly. Right on. So how many? So it looks like every you're just crossing between all these different squares. How many of those did you make for the procedurally generated dungeons? Uh, there's just over 150. Uh, but I don't think all all of those aren't accessible in the early access version because right. uh, basically there's throughout the course of the campaign. Uh oh, it just crash. Oh no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> So yeah, throughout the course of the campaign, so there was a white switch there. See that black and white switch at the bottom of the screen? You're going to have yeah. to hit that because in the puzzle room I was just in, there's a bunch of blocks that aren't set for our wall. So we're going to do that. Woo! Look at that. Yeah. Clever use of the guy. I'm not walking all the way over there. Screw that. Clever use of game mechanics is right. Yeah. So, gotta like line this stuff up. Okay. Now I gotta go back because if I hit that switch again, the ball's not gonna fall down. So I gotta hit it the other way now. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Crap. You gotta get out of uh -oh. here. So if combat starts, it spawns more enemies. Is that yep, it? and it kind of then it kind of locks the the camera in place. You can't so you can't run away until you kill all the enemies. Oh, I see. All right, it's pretty Let's annoying. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna have uh two, two, like because I'm like like uh, incredibly stupid. I would not be able to figure this stuff out on my own. Are there gonna be like tutorials <laughs> through this being like, you should step on buttons or look for hidden switches <laughs> or like if i stand in a room for too long like an idiot is there going to be like a little blinking arrow like hey go this way dummy i think we had that planned at one point Ooh, no i'm gonna have to go back to that switch uh we had that planned at one point but uh it kind of fell by the wayside like we have a hint system where you should yeah. be able to click on uh the left thumbstick and i, I was the hint systems target demographic that's me. yeah but the thing is, like, I kind of let that fall by the wayside. Like, now it doesn't really do anything. Right. And it's 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 going to be, like, having... Uh, oh, crap. And now I've got start. But, uh... They are mad. Yeah. Oof, that's a lot of pokes. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a thousand, but... You know. Yeah, it's lying. It's, it's a bit of an exaggeration. Just got though. I'd say mine's a lot bigger oh, than it is, too. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah I the, the thing about the hit, 10, hit system first. is it. <laughs> 10,000? <laughs> <laughs> he died a couple commas. Uh, but, yeah, the thing about the hint system is, like, having that work with the player built dungeons isn't really feasible. Right. Because, like, I can add a hint system that, like, kind of, like, glows, makes certain things glow in a certain order or something like that, and I can set that up on my puzzles, but having players mm -hmm. do that is... Yeah. yeah. When Bjorn does it, it looks super simple. Yeah. It's really not. The other thing, too, oh. is, like, no. I know the secret, because you have to light these in a certain order, but you probably don't know that right away until you get rid of that curtain. And then you see what order they're supposed to be in. Oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm blown away. See, my <laughs> little... If I was playing this, my Dora Milaje would be starving to death in one of these squares right now. A curtain. <laughs> fully intact. <laughs> no, you just, you just destroy all of the boxes and you'll get some gold. And then you can go to the shop and get get a donut or something. Yeah. Take five. <laughs> Run speed donut. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the one that gives you the biggest boost to run speed is honey for some reason. Like it's sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Uh, yeah. There you go. Sugar rush. It's a good way of explaining that. 20 minutes to solve that puzzle you just did in like five minutes, in like 10 seconds. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't solved it yet. I meant the previous one. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. 
that was too far. I need to turn it here. Smit. Oh. Is the order, like, uh, random every time? Yes. Is that something you can make yourself in, a, in the puzzle builder? Uh, no, I don't think so. That That's one of the things, is, like, I built a lot of these puzzles before we even had the puzzle builder. So they're not even yeah. necessary. So, yeah, those are boots. Those look like boots. <laughs> they don't look so, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I can't even remember how many puzzles I've made. I think there's, like... 70 or something like that that were made before the puzzle builder so they're not necessarily using the same like a lot of things behave similarly but they're not they're not necessarily things you can make with the puzzle builder the may the, the mace still makes sense i mean there's like a million mm -hmm. games that use just like a bag mm -hmm. or something as like a placeholder yeah. for every mm -hmm. item ever yeah i think that's i'll probably switch it to that because we have a bag that i use for like gold and and health mm -hmm. and stuff like that so yeah, you. So in early access, you play through the dungeon once, you get the credits, and then uh, you end up back at the start. Uh, and you can actually scroll through the credits fast too if you, if you just want to skip them. Then you're back at the start, and uh, so there's a couple things here. You can reset the dungeon, and then it'll just generate another procedural one. Or oh yeah, so when the dungeons when the treasure's been looted, this thing turns black. All right. And then I can reset it. And then now it'll be a new dungeon with uh, another treasure. And, oh, cool. And basically, based on what I selected at the start, and you can change this in the options. So yeah, enable dungeons for mod.io. That's the site that it uploads and downloads them from. So if yeah. I turn that off and I go in, it'll be another procedural dungeon, but I can have it on, and then it'll pick a random one. Or you can talk to her. And this is the dungeon browser. This uh, this character's placeholder, that's what Jacques's actually working on right now. Uh, hopefully next week, or before the end of the week, we'll have Jacques's character in there. Yeah. Cool. And But this is the dungeon browser, so you can uh, filter uh -huh. by name, sort by ID or date uploaded, or like a specific creator. A lot of these are just my test dungeons, so it's just like two rooms, so I can get to the end and test like how it rates and yeah. things like that. Right, right. Um, yeah. As the like creators, do you have any control over, like, because you're saying that just importing dungeons from mod dio, it can mm -hmm. it can randomly uh, incorporate the player made dungeons mm -hmm. based on their rating. That like mm -hmm. sounds like something that would be like pretty easily trollable to just like make like something that's not possible to finish and then have all your friends like rank it up. Do you guys have the ability to stop those from getting loaded or? Uh, so there is a there's a verification process, so you do have to play through yeah. the dungeon. It it is fairly easy, like to make a dungeon that nobody could complete. Yeah. Uh, and there is uh, let's see. Well, I'll load up one of my test dungeons because there is a way of reporting a dungeon. Right. Uh, so. Oh, well, reporting. That's so. perfect. Yeah. So I'll just run in. And. Because this is something we talked about with uh, a publisher basically uh, a few months ago. It was basically like, oh, so what's your system for reporting? And we didn't, we were kind of like, didn't really have it sorted out. But we're like, okay, well, it, it's, it wasn't like a huge issue, but it's all solvable. So at any time, if you pause, there's the option Y to report a dungeon. This only shows up right. if you're in a player-made dungeon. And so <laughs> see, you can report the dungeon, and then there's a couple different options. Yeah. And uh, we're using the default settings on mod.io, which is if you, if uh, the, if a dungeon gets reported 10 times, it automatically gets yeah. taken down. With oh, one report, though, I'll get an email, and I can, if I have time or, or whoever uh, we put in charge of that, like, has time, they, yeah. they can review it and take it down and stuff like that. So. It feels job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but then yeah and if you get to the end of the dungeon you get to rate it, it loads up we have a better thumbnail now than this one <laughs> uh, Jacques Bertin, we showed it off last week but yeah right could like it little hearts go up and then you get teleported back to the entrance that's cool and you can load up another one so with yeah. your procedurally thing how, how many are you putting into the early access and what's the likelihood that, that you'd get like back to back repeats 
Uh, it's it'd be pretty rare that you get back to back repeats because every time a dungeon room is used in a dungeon, it gets added to a list. Ah, uh, cool. And basically, its <laughs> position in that list is mul- it, It's it basically if it's in that list near the top of the yeah. list, it was recently used. Then its percentage yeah. a chance of appearing is like really low. It, it gets, oh, like, right on. Divided by a thousand, basically. So that's cool. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to think of anything that you guys haven't already thought of here. But no, no, it's it's, I, I, it's 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 great. It, it's great to have questions like that. And then it's like, oh, because like people want to know that, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. That's great. And it's like it, and we're showing it off, right? It's not like a hypothetical thing where it's like, oh yeah, well, this is what it's going to look like. That it's the funny thing that Jock was saying earlier today when he was, uh, like reaching out to, uh, like. Uh, like uh, doing some marketing stuff and he's like it's so nice to be able to say that our game comes out in a week rather than some nebulous a year yeah. or two or and it's so nice to have like practical stuff that we can show rather than just say oh well hypothetically this is what it's going to be mm-hmm. yeah oh it's exciting that's really cool mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right so is it is it going to is Sorry, is the early access going to include the other weapons, or just, or the is the spear uh, going to be like the thing? Yep, the early access includes the other weapons, but the only way to get them is to like go into the dungeons, and it's one of the things you can pick up. Are you gonna find them? Then, Do you have any like on like a say on a different save right now? Uh, I I have a weapons gym I could load up. Just load that. That sounds like uh, like the Matrix. The weapons, <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah. It kind of is. Load it up. <laughs> These shelves just go sw- swishing past Swish. you guys' head. Yeah. <laughs> but it it is like there's just rows and rows of the top, like legendary level weapons and armor and everything. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. And there is, it. I think there's a bug I need to fix. Or it's just a, mm-hmm. a thing I haven't set up. Because if you get legendary level of the armor, it actually unlocks another ability. Oh, cool. Uh, so if you get a complete set of, um, like, legendary lightning armor that's all the same alignment that matches, uh, you get, like, the lightning dodge, which basically means you dodge from A to B in, like, the blink of an eye, and it does lightning damage to anything in your path. Oh, there's no art for it, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to take a, a another look at how I unlock the equipment. Because typically the way that unlocks in the campaign is you have to beat the game once and start a new game plus, and then you get access. Then you can find the legendary equipment. Uh, right. you can't you can't find it on your first playthrough. And it's basically like kind of like you know Diablo, where it's like, oh, the first like you're not gonna find any like ultra rare high quality stuff in the first world it kind of gets unlocked as you play through the game so how far along in this story mode are you guys uh it's i'd say it it's it's different for each department like uh because i'd say yeah. it's like 80 percent written and um like the story all the dialogue and missions and everything are about 80 percent written the mm-hmm. Uh, the world design and everything like that is all in in gray box so it's like you can play through the levels uh there's there's boss fights all the enemies are there there are procedural dungeons peppered throughout the entire thing and when we actually right. do release the campaign if you have that option on like allow dungeons for mod.io as you're exploring the world and you go into a procedural dungeon it might not be a procedural dungeon it might be downloaded for mod.io and like really it, yeah, and it'll like roll the credits when you go in, right? Because I, I don't know if you noticed yeah. that when I went into that one, it's like, I think it's like Test Dungeon or whatever by Bjorn or Player One or whatever it was. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool that it, that uh, the player generated content can get put into the story yeah. mode. And there's that's a uh, really cool idea. Yeah, we have these things. I don't know what the best comparison is for it, but it, so we have these tomes like storybooks, right. and each one there's like twenty of them, and each one has twenty pages. Uh, and you find it, and it, at the end of each one of those procedural dungeons, like we encourage you to go in there. So there's, a, uh, there'll be, you'll find a page or a weapon or like a, a piece of equipment at the end of a procedural dungeon in the campaign. And if you collect uh, all the pages, like the more pages you have, like the 
each tome gives you a different buff. So like if you collect all the tomes from Odin or something like that, like then everybody in the party gets an experience buff if you have that right. equipped. And then there might be another one for gold, there's another one for damage. So there's you there's you're incentivized to explore all those dungeons. So very cool. So, and yeah, you just press down on the D-pad, so this is a crossbow, and then it has an alternate fire mode. So it shoots one in either direction. It's it's playing the same uh, animation, but we're gonna get yeah. like bottles for that. And then when you, the neat thing about that is when you do the combos, it does the combos in either direction too. Uh, oh, right on. The spins, the like spiral one is a bit odd though. The one that the the one that we uh, the other one that we had that looked good with the fire, I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. This one doesn't have the the fire uh, particle effect like the javelin does. We could probably update that. Yeah. Then yeah, there's the cannon, just super slow, but that does they do way more damage. I don't have a test enemy in here. And then yeah, for the weapons. So there's the dual sword, zip around really quickly. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> oh, dual sword is so much fun. Yeah. They're, they they can be tough to control, though, because if you don't know what you're doing, it's like you just sit around and you're like, you don't know where you are on screen because you're just moving around too fast. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, if you do, like... Feels like a... Uh, thousand pokes? Mm -hmm. Yoda in the... Uh... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> in the prequel trilogy, yeah. 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 I, was, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, there's the heavy sword, which starts up. Oh, wait, no. There we go. So it starts off super slow. It does more damage than anything else, but you have to really let it get going. Well, there you go. Yeah. And then, yeah, basically up to full speed, so it's the same speed as the uh, as the javelin. It's, it's using the same animations right now, but eventually we'll have yeah. each weapon set will have its own set of animations. Very cool. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> but that does like it does so much damage because each each one of those hits does like I think two or three times as much damage as the spear version. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And it looks like yeah. you're while you have the sword out, your uh, stamina regenerates while you're maintaining that sort of basic attack too. Uh, yeah. So the way stamina works, it's kind of hard to see because we hide the HUD when you don't need it. But uh, stamina regenerates the fastest when you're standing still and doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, and then if you're running around, it recovers a bit slower. If you're in melee, it's a bit slower. If you're attacking, it's even slower. So right. basically, like, what you, if you if you really want to maximize it, it's basically like you have to stop attacking for a second or even stop if you can for a few seconds and let it regenerate and then do another combo. Nice. Yeah. And it's only expanded, like, it's only spent during combos? Uh, combos and dodging. If I dodge, mm -hmm. there it takes a little bit. Oh, I see. I'm thinking, I because I, I think for balance reasons we might tie it into blocking as well because you can block. So we might tie it into like whenever you take a hit, it reduces your stamina a bit or something. Because right now you can just block indefinitely, which feels yeah. a bit weird. I don't have a huge problem with it, but it does feel a bit weird that you can just be like a thousand guys can be shooting at you and you just stand there like this. We also do yeah. auto block. So if you're facing the direction of the attack and not pressing anything, you'll just automatically block it. Uh, hmm. But if, if you're moving or attacking or anything, then you don't block it. If you manually block, do you block the attacks coming from behind as well? Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's just... Uh, the only thing about the auto-block, like, yeah, because it, it doesn't make sense for you to auto-block if it's coming from behind. But The combat from what I saw, it seems like it's fast enough and like things are moving around enough that being able to block like that doesn't seem overpowered necessarily. Like, mm -hmm. it didn't yeah. seem like you would have time to sit there and like and even notice. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is. Uh, let's actually load up the... Actually, I can, I can probably should see if I can quit and go to the main menu and then go to the dungeon builder and I'll show you because enemies come in a bunch of different sizes. The only ones you saw me fight there were like small and mini, small so even smaller. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to the dungeon builder. And where's Jeff? All right, Jeff. 
The Dora Milaje. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yo. Milaje. Yeah. Okay. So. Go ahead and desert build first. Uh, I will. I see you got, you updated all the screens there. All the, yep. the backgrounds. Yep. Uh, Jacques went through and actually took screenshots of the new rooms as the way they are. The, the ones we had before were all placeholder. So, all right. So this, so. Uh, the grid that you're on right now is that like mm -hmm. the the layout, like base layout, and then you can set these square by square. Yeah. Start to finish. So that's how big yeah. it can get. Because that's pretty cool. Because yeah. the one you did was, uh, it looked like maybe nine, nine to sixteen rooms somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And that this is like it's seven by seven. So. Mm hmm. It, I don't know how interesting it would be if it was that big. I, they're also like, yeah. we're on PC, so it's not like, a, well, like there there might be memory issues and performance issues that arrive. I mean, you're only looking at a small portion of the screen. Yeah. But when you have that much stuff going on, it might start causing problems. Oh, what? There, there might, I mean, there might be like a sadist out there that would make a 49 room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 49 it will happen. I'm judging, but... Uh... You, you know it will happen. There we go. I don't imagine it would make the high high voted. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing that happens, though, too, is basically it automatically generates rooms between any two adjacent... Uh, or it automatically generates passageways between any two adjacent rooms. Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, if you do that, then it's just like there's no hallways or anything. It's all just a grid. He hammered you. Yeah. So, yeah, he... This guy... Oh! Didn't hit me there. He should kill me in like one hit, unless I auto block, obviously. But... Yeah. So yeah, the the big wow. guys do enough damage to kill you in one hit, and they have yeah. a ton of health. So the easiest way to beat them is actually to deflect their attacks back, and oh. I can disarm them if I time my if I time my block properly. Oh. <laughs> oh, so there's a sweet spot of. I see. Yeah, and he just went and picked up his weapon again. But I killed him. That's neat. Yeah. I love that mechanic. Hope you get the timing right it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot the timing, of fun, especially... The timing used to be a lot easier for me. I am terrible at that kind of mechanic. So yeah. I've made timing that I'm comfortable with, and then Julian played it, and he was like, this is broken. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I had to fix it to make it more in line with normal games and what's expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the Ganondorf too, right? Or Mario Tennis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh god, there's so much stuff we have that like I don't even know if I want to go in. Like, uh, we're we're focusing on early access stuff. There's like but like some of our earlier dev streams we showed some of the special characters that we have. Like there's a diamond one that all of your attacks just bounce off of, and the only way to kill him is to deflect his attack back at him, and you have to do it three times. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the that was the dungeon builder, Jeff. And yeah, so right. there's a bunch of different room types. We have bosses. I have access to the bosses. Oh no, I don't have access to the bosses. What happened to them? Oh, maybe I haven't. So, the way the dungeon builder works is... A lot of stuff. How many puzzle rooms do I have? 50 puzzle rooms. So I, the way the dungeon builder works is you only gain access to uh, rooms. Like for the for bosses, for example, you only get, gain access to the boss rooms after you've defeated the boss in the campaign. Oh. Right. That's cool. So, yeah, so I haven't played the campaign, so I don't have access to any of the bosses. And so similarly, is there... there... Go ahead. Is there a chance then that somebody could beat the campaign and find a really difficult boss put it into a dungeon like a great one that everybody likes and is highly rated and then stupid jeff uh is you know bumbles effing his way through the through the game for the first time <laughs> with yeah. with player dungeons enabled and then i randomly get in like my first go through randomly get this dungeon with like the last boss uh no that shouldn't happen because basically um oh there's basically what's called there's a list of requirements for mm -hmm. uh a dungeon to be able to pick a dungeon for you the, the random one yeah uh and one of those there so there's a few different things one of them is are there a few 
requirements can be different things. One of the requirements can be what abilities you have unlocked. So there's abilities you unlock oh. throughout the course of the campaign. Block so if I and... can't beat the boss, then it's yeah. not going to put it there? Nice. Exactly. If you haven't beat the boss already, it won't put it there, basically. Okay. Nice and, nice. like, yeah, because we don't want the first time you fight that boss to be in a player made dungeon. We want that to be in the campaign. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, like, there's a, there's ability, like, block and dodge are abilities that you don't start with. You actually unlock those in the campaign. And there's, like, because uh -huh. there's, like, holes and stuff that you jump over in the dungeon. So those rooms won't show up uh, if you don't have dodge. And, huh. well, so I'll, I'll show you some examples of, like, so there's this room that you need the dodge ability to get through. But then there's this room that's, like, well, you don't. Because uh, yeah, there's a bridge and everything. It's just, like, there's gaps that you can fall into, which makes combat more interesting. But it's not required to, to get through it. Yeah. So, like, I could walk through that, but I can just dodge as a shortcut. And then, but this one, though, like, this one will only show up after you unlock dodge. And similarly, oh, okay. like, um, generally in procedural dungeons, when you're playing through, through the campaign, only um, enemies from that world will show up in that dungeon. There's, like, 15 right. different enemy types, three per world, and there's five worlds. So, right. yeah, so only those ones will show up, but then in player-made dungeons, they could be whatever, because you can customize that. That's and cool. I don't, I don't think we'd limit that. And then, yeah, So there's I know other... who Neath is, uh, yeah. but who's that other guy? Oh, oh the other guy, Momo Taro. He's Peach Boy. Peach Boy? Peach Boy. The Peach Boy. Yeah. It's, uh... He's, uh, a Japanese... I don't know, Jack, do you want to talk about him? You're the one that wanted to put him in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and I've yeah, been talking like... this whole time, so... He's, just, he's, a, he's a mythological character from a Japanese myth. Mm -mm. I always thought he was Indonesian, just because of the, the book I, I have said he was Indonesian or Burmese, but... <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he's Japanese. It's a it's just a cool story. But he takes on a, a village of ogres. I think uh, he's got his entire lore. It's actually like a well known story, especially in Japan. So very okay. cool. But yeah, we, all of these characters kind of have their own mythologies. So we yeah. lightly yeah. we lightly touch on it, but you don't like we don't go in depth outside of like collecting the pages of, of the story, right? So. Yeah, it's not like yeah, a yeah. part of the gameplay, so like it, it's kind of a nice thing to read up on, and like if you're really interested in it, you can actually go go and kind of read more about them on your own, I guess. Mm. Yeah, just... uh, Bjorn and I have been talking about this stuff because I listened to a, a couple podcasts about like mythological stories and creatures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah, never I've been... heard of Momotaro. Yeah, yeah, I've been listening to that podcast. It's really good. There's a uh... man. Some of those Greek heroes, though, I'm just like. I don't know. The, I don't even. I don't even. Jerk. The here. The the. It's not even that the heroes are jerks. It's the gods are the ones that are jerks. Yeah, they're massive jerks. <laughs> they're, they're, they're horrible. I really like Greek mythology for that. They're like yeah. just self-serving assholes that like yeah, oh, don't God, care horrible. about you. And they actually don't really like you. <laughs> yeah, they don't like each other. They don't like anybody. Yeah. They're just so capricious it. and and yeah. petty. <laughs> it's uh, it's immortality, you know. I think yeah. it's just like... <laughs> well, there's, there's a saying that I, I've been telling a few people every now and then because I kind of realized it last year. is like, you only really mature as much as you have to. And I mm -hmm. guess if you're a god, you don't need to mature at all. So yeah. they're basically like two-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, That's great. That's great. Yeah. I was watching something actually really funny, like a reality show. And the guy on there was like, he had celebrity parents and was saying uh, more or less... The age that you become famous is the age that you stay forever. Yeah, and right. He, he was talking about his dad, Tommy Lee, and he said yeah. Tommy Lee was famous by seventeen. So he's basically my dad is like a seventeen-year-old kid, and yep, he hasn't right. grown. Up. <laughs> so... That's wild. Yeah. I remember reading something about uh, who's died now, but about DMX and how in like two thousand eighteen or something like that. Uh, he was making fun of somebody with a smartphone because he still had like a flip phone and still dressed and spoke like he was in like 1998 and uh, just like did not grow or mature past a certain point and was so separated because of his inner circle socially from mm -hmm. like the you know the rest of the world that he thought smartphones were lame and like only for super nerds and not something wow. that every 
person in the world has. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, wow. Yeah, it's just completely out of touch. Mm -hmm. So that's all the Greek gods are, man. They're just a bunch of out of touch DMXs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, almost every single one of Zeus's stories can be summarized as where to hose at, so. Sure. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, something I did over the last week was I made these deterministic. So now you should always go in the same order. Screw these. Very cool. Yeah. I like and that. You can have you can have warps between different rooms. Like if I set up, if I go back to the dungeon builder, I could set. Yeah, I'll just do it right now. Like uh, you can set up like completely disconnected areas of the dungeon, but connect them with warps. This reminds me of the localization because the, lo the guy who was doing our Portuguese localization was like, "What do you mean by warp?" <laughs> I had to oh, show them the yeah. so that it's like do you mean like uh like warp speed or do you mean more, like you know <laughs> uh, it's not an easy word to translate really easy yeah warp was a beam was another one that was strange for him like do you mean like a rate like a laser gun beam no 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 like a beam uh, like a balance beam like you know there's there were several of those ones that were just like homonyms in english or yeah I don't think there's like there's no word for warp in French. No, I don't hmm. think so. I mean, I I use portal. Oh yeah, isn't that working between two? Hmm. Oh, that's weird. Oh, but I get that's a bug. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Try that again. Because it was just you working know, in the other. Uh, Korean is is like for a lot of those words. I'm like, what is the word? And I'm like. <laughs> like, it's not the kind of Korean that I learned oh, growing I up. Oh, I bet I know what that is. Well, I'll actually okay. Google it, and it'll probably just be like, warp. <laughs> oh, it's just been <laughs> <that> translated. <laughs> like, new, right. then Koreans, let's take it, adopt the English word. Like, I remember mm -hmm. it was like, a kid growing up learning how to say like, helicopter. It was helicopter. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Computer yeah. is the same in almost every language. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except for except for French, <laughs> yep. or the Yep. We are snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Irish is kind of similar too, where they have like because it's or like Irish and Gaelic, like they're trying to maintain the language, so they have to come up mm -hmm. with like yeah. uh, Irish derived words because a lot of those words are derived from Latin, right? Mm -hmm. I was uh, mm. I was in yeah. Ireland a couple of years ago, and all of their uh, not Northern Ireland, but like Ireland, Ireland, and they all mm. their signs are in both languages, and I had no, I didn't expect it when I got there, so I was walking mm. around like taking pictures of street signs, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the dumbest kind of tourism, you know? <laughs> yeah, linguistics tourism. Oh. Yeah, I wonder why that's not working. I'm gonna have to look that up. Figure that out. But yeah, that's pretty much the game. There's the puzzle builder is pretty cool. We have like uh, you can have water and fire, and burn stuff, and there's wind stuff that can blow stuff around. I guess. So without um without giving anything away, like what's like what is the story like? Can you give me like the elevator pitch? Yeah, it's basically uh, so you're a kid looking for your lost dog. And you kind of end up in an Alice in Wonderland, spirited away kind of scenario. Right. Uh, and you end up in John this Wick village. John with a spear. John Wick with a spear. No, your dog's not <laughs> dead. It's just he's lost and you're looking for him. Right. <laughs> and uh, basically, <laughs> you go to this village and uh, it's kind of the nexus of mythologies is what we've been calling it. It's like, uh, mm -hmm. so like characters from stories. I don't know if you've ever read Sandman. But there's a tavern in that called the world's end and it's just oh. like characters from random stories and mythologies can come uh visit and right. basically whenever they visit they kind of leave a portal open that you can then go through into their realm to look for your dog and it's basically like you're, you're trying to find them and it's just like well there are all these portals here that you can go through and you have to figure out where your dog is very cool 
Yeah. And every every world is based like, uh, on a different uh, mythology. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's. Uh, I don't even think it's spoilers to go over them. There's. There's Momo Taro's from the last world, so it's kind of like. Uh, Kind of because there's a lot of kind of cross pollinization between like Korean, Japanese, and Chinese that have a lot of similar, right. if not the same, myths, but different names for uh, characters and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, Neith is there; she's from Egypt, obviously. Uh, right. The music we're playing right now is actually made for the Celtic world. There's one based on Celtic mythology. Odin is in the game. Actually, like our key art is just all the characters are from all the different worlds. So there's Odin. And it's young, hot Odin. He doesn't have the eye patch yet, and he's not too bright because he hasn't traded his eye for wisdom yet. Right. Uh, and then Inanna is from Babylon, Babel, and she's uh, she. That's World One. So yeah, those are all the places you go and the people you meet. That's cool. I like yeah. I like the idea of having stupid Odin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm excited. Let's try this. Uh, okay, let's see if I can. Right, oh. and then, like, yeah, so this is one of the puzzle things. Like, the wind there pushes the projectiles. Then it can do other stuff. Like, there's stuff burning there. You can, uh, if you set things, like, uh, building blocks. So this is, like, stone by default. I could change it to fire, or to, to wood, and then it'll burn when I put it in the fire. So That's start cool. burning. And then there's also water fountain that I can put. <laughs> and then if I grab Blood the fire. Uh, yeah. Pressure plate, so like you can control stuff with pressure plate, so it'll be off by default. And then when I step on that plate, it'll uh, turn on. So go... But there it goes. Got to work on the timing of that, but yeah. And then the like wind will push the fire. So if there's a if there's uh, something burning next to some wood stuff, you can put the some wind on it, and then it'll push the fire. Oh, there you go. And then oh, when stuff gets wet, it gets damp, and it can't be set on fire until it dries off. So it won't burn right, right. away. It's dry off. There's. You can kind of see it in the material, like there's water droplets and it gets a bit darker and shinier. And then it's set on fire, and I put it out again. And if I just let it burn, it'll like, it'll get darker and darker and then it runs out of fuel and it, it'll disintegrate. It explodes right now because that's the particle effect I had. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It'll probably just crumble apart into ash. Yeah. Yeah. So tons we have i think there's like over 50 different puzzle elements you can put together even like if you want to dress up like these don't really have a, a practical purpose necessarily the barrels right but if you want to like dress up your place but these are flammable though so you can't set them on fire ilrith in the chat is all about mm -hmm. uh celtic oh cool mythology oh nice yeah yes Oh, wow, we actually have a lot of people here. I wasn't even paying attention to the chat, so sorry about that. All right, it's just Silver and me. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've been glancing down every now and then. I'm like, yeah, Julian's take care of <laughs> uh, So, yeah. I'm trying to think of what else we got. Yeah, we have... Um, so, like, there's this ability section. There's a few items we don't have in here, because there is... As you play through the campaign, you unlock abilities. And so there's a few items in here. Like, you, you unlock a push ability or it's called the cleave ability and you can push these blocks but right. we also have a puzzle element that is a hammer that can push the blocks where is that there it is huh. hammer oh, that up by accident so, yeah. hammer you can put that and then hook something up to it and push it but you unlock the ability to push them later and then there's a few other abilities that we don't have the puzzle elements for in early access because you don't have those abilities. But right. like a like a Zelda game or a lot of a Metro game, you unlock abilities and interact with other things in the environment. So with the dungeon builder, I think I saw in the in the opening screen of it that mm -hmm. there were a bunch of rooms like sort of preset rooms that you could just randomly place in there. Oh Can yeah. People go into those and then like go into the edit mode and kind of reverse engineer how they were made so that they can 
like to sort of understand like oh shit so this is how that's done and uh not really like these puzzle rooms because they were all built before the dungeon builder existed so some of them you might be able to make other ones it's just like well it's all it's custom script that i did i'd i'd like it to be all stuff that you could build in the dungeon builder but i just don't have time to go back and redesign all those puzzles let's see so yeah but there's yeah there's 50 different puzzles that i made that you have uh, that you can select from here and all different room shapes and sizes and these are just the ones that don't require you to have any abilities there's a bunch more that like when you unlock a new ability there's uh there's more puzzle rooms to get added because those ones require you to have that ability i see then yeah treasure rooms custom room custom rooms are the ones you've made so and you can see the names on these ones mm-hmm mm-hmm So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that I think that great, covers man. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, you went over so much, and I just have like one thing to show. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Holy crap, it's 10 p.m. already. That took yeah, you know, like a while. Yeah. That's a good stream, well, I though. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you having me in. Yeah, I, pre- I appreciate talking to you. We're definitely gonna put this up on YouTube. Is like, hey, we're just gonna explain the game. Yeah, yeah. that'll be a good resource for sure. But, no, that's good. uh, yeah, Jack, do you want to go next? Sure. I have <laughs> one show. <laughs> All right. You have, you showed the entire game and I, I am showing. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> All right. Well, New Neath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you guys can see, okay. So this was the, uh, the old, who was Pushing Paragon? Cleopatra, I uh, think. Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is kind of more our style, more our our kind of character. This is Neath. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go over quickly, like, kind of the process of me kind of finishing the sculpt last week, the high poly sculpt, and then going and uh, baking all the textures in Marmoset. I won't show that. And then uh, right now, my current thing is I am skinning it. So I'm attaching it to a, a, a rig, the existing rig, so we can use the same animations. And we hope they hold up right now. Like yeah. you can see the slight difference. Like when I animate it from like where the bones and the mouth and the eyes are. So uh, hopefully that will hold up and not destroy yeah. everything. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, then we can just reuse the same animation. So Neath will be posed in that exact same way. Well, this mm-hmm. Neath will be posed in the exact same way and hopefully blink the same way and hopefully everything will work. That's... <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, cross our fingers and uh yeah that's about it so yeah last week i just kind of finished modeling her texturing her the hair was ugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your hair is always a, a nasty thing mm-hmm. but yeah uh there i think she's the same polygon count without the hair because i think uh her her hair was actually quite expensive so i think the one that i made just for uh any artists that might be looking at the stream that's unfreeze all so she is about fifty five thousand triangles which really isn't very much and the current one is seventy thousand not including the hair so with the hair it's probably closer to a hundred thousand i think so it's it's a pretty optimized model. interesting yeah looks great that looks so cool it's- so it's uh yeah it's based on our uh, concept art that uh, the concept art was went a little too Korean anime I think and that's obviously in our key art it kind of helps infer a lot of our designs but I think for the actual game though is I'm toning it down quite a bit and making it a little bit more I think the way I, I would describe the appeal that we're going for is kind of a little bit more Disney ish Disney mm-hmm. a little bit. It's not a, like when you look at it, you don't think of a Disney character, but it's kind of Korean, kind of Disney ish, kind of. It's got multiple influences. So, but yeah, it, it goes side by side with the characters we're actually making for uh, our playable character, I guess. So let's see if we got just the head. <laughs> so, for anybody who wanted to know how character customization works, is you separate every piece out and then you can hot swap yeah. them together. And everyone's <laughs> white hair and white eyes, and then we just we multiply the color on top. 
because you can go darker easier, but you can't go lighter very easier. So then I did a bunch of things that Neath gets that the player doesn't get, like basically because she's got a hairline in there, I could actually like, paint in like a shadow in her hair and I could do all the other stuff yeah. and make it look a lot nicer. But because we have a bald variant, I can't actually like put the nice kind of shadowing or shading from the hair on there. Well, maybe I can. I'll figure out, maybe I'll figure out a way to do that. Uh, but yeah, Neath gets a few more bells and whistles of the character. Yeah. Kind of a... Uh, unfortunately part and parcel with having a kind of a bit of a customization system is you don't get to do all the super nice things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's okay. It's going to be very unnoticeable. Yeah, her hair looks really yeah, good, by the way. I really like the uh, anisotropic uh, yeah. look on it. Actually, I just copied and pasted it from what you did on the main oh, character. Yeah? Oh, yeah? Cool. Uh, so, yeah, she's... Uh, you see the, the stark contrast from Paragon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's a little bit it's got a lot more fidelity, a lot more detail, mm -hmm. but it's not as it it kind of loses the warmth and charm, I think, for our game. It certainly mm -hmm. really kind of stand out negatively because of that. Mm -hmm. We want a little bit more whimsical, a bit more. But yeah, yeah. this is it, it's still a pretty incredible model, which is not doesn't not fit what, what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. It, did, it did look out it yeah, it looks out of place. Yeah. yeah. So once we have this guy in here, we're going to have to replace uh, the other ones, Odin and Momotaro and all the other ones that we have in there. Cool. So this is my this was my week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also, this is more, more than your week. Yeah, you've been working on this for a while. Yeah, three weeks, I think, was mm -hmm. uh, it. Wow. Usually it's Very about cool. character. Usually about a month. But mm -hmm. I, I when I did the body and the head, I, I set everything up so it could be reused. So whenever I make another female, I get to skip the first part. I don't have to mm -hmm. do the body and head anymore. So it should be two weeks per character, per female character afterwards. Cool. There you go. Uh, well, mm -hmm. for the one other female for character we have. But then uh, if we have any other females that are in the game, we could mm -hmm. probably use them. Yeah, yeah. We'll have that. some generic NPCs yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> cool. So they all yeah. have the exact same hands, the exact same neck, <laughs> most of the same face. We can we can tweak things like move things up and down, make the nose wider, smaller, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, it'll be kind of intact. Same feet, same hands, same arms, same body type. It'll be yeah, super easy. Mm -hmm. So as long as they have like t-shirts and hands, we're good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Make sure Gina knows t-shirts and hands are, are mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have the entire naked body under there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the entire point of it. it was like we have yeah. like a, an entire. Where is it? Open. <laughs> Let's go here. Uh, shared. So we have a the entire naked base, and Neath is now going to be the entire naked base. So. Mm -hmm. We have this all here and it's completely textured underneath. So it's just a matter of like, depending on what you want, just have to cut it. Just it's a Barbie doll basically. So yeah. yeah. Huh. yeah. We don't need She still has anymore. all the bones for the whip because that, that other character has a whip. Oh yeah. It's weird. It's oh. <laughs> it to anything. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Like yeah. The next port. Yeah. So I got to figure something out after like, Put the whip back in there to scan it to that but they have a lot of other weird things so i'm gonna have to just make a bunch of like random invisible geometry yeah because you need to buy yeah. stuff for the bones uh, yeah unless i can figure out a way to get it to export or import without the, the bones there so mm -hmm. yeah who has, who has a whip she does she has like this wonder woman oh this whip. one yeah oh and if i if i don't put the whip in there it doesn't seem to work interesting mm -hmm. She's supposed to have a staff, though. She's supposed to have this staff, but I'm not confident that the animations will work because she, I think she kind of like crosses her hand, her arms over like this. Yeah. And holds yeah. It. Like how right. you clip through the arm and clip through its face, her head or whatever. It might be kind of weird. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's hope this works. Fingers crossed. If not, we're going to have to get some help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if not, we'll just put in the test dummy that we had. <laughs> well, I think we're just going to let it clip. I think that's what we've yeah. been doing for the game. It's like, well, it we'll is. fix the animations at some point. Just mm -hmm. got to wait. Yeah, <laughs> it is early access. I mean, yeah, Jeff and I played Valheim. It's very forgivable yeah. in early access to have those kind yeah. of bugs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cool.
Mm-hmm. So yeah, you got you got like a good forty five minute chunk to talk about all the cool things that you did, and I have a mm-hmm. model. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really great, though. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Looks awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, before we started talking, I was like looking at your Discord stream, or you're like, you know, tweaking it and playing around with it mm-hmm. a little bit. And then when Bjorn went into the actual game, I was like, oh, no wonder he was making that other one. This one looks like it does not belong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. This looks great. This is really cool. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. yeah. It's much yeah. more. It also reads better from out, out here because there's so many small details. Like this this character is clearly made to be seen from like, you know, from like, mm-hmm. like these close-up angles, whereas this character, like, I don't want to say it doesn't hold up here, but it, it's meant for like, our camera view it's meant for our like our style our character like you know mm-hmm. the character runs up it, it makes more sense talking to this character than than this <laughs> of course yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think when yeah, it's like uh, time, it's like that mario game where they had like him go to new york and it was like realistically proportioned humans yeah. oh yeah in odyssey <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah. was a bit weird mm-hmm. Or that Sonic game where it was like Sonic and realistically portioned humans. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess the movie or the first yeah. trailer. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna dip out, but I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, man. So, have have a good night. time. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Nice. Well and- we we're pretty much done here, are we? Yeah, I think I, so. I was going to start talking about marketing, but I realized I'm not really like a an expert on this, and I, I don't want to say anything that would make us look bad to people I might have reached out to. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's fair. It's like, well, it's like, what do we talk about? And it's like, well, I don't know. I think it's okay. We're we don't really need to go into details. We started reaching out to like a, a few. Uh, well, we started tweeting everything and trying to get some traction and stuff, but. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it is just like, well, we'll see what happens over the next few days. So I, I think the one thing I could think I could say about this was um, we we don't really have uh, like a, a marketing budget or kind of resources dedicated to significant amounts of marketing like other games mm-hmm. would have. So we're relying heavily kind of on our just social media, but also our what we learned was uh, just a call to action because mm-hmm. uh, generally what we wanted to do was have a, uh, like when when you say hey look at this trader you want to be like you don't want a four year lull between when somebody watches mm-hmm. a trader and when they play the game because they're going to forget about it so what they're going to want is they're going to want to see like some screenshots some weekly updates they're going to want to see some you know new gifts but because we weren't um delivering that kind of content quickly enough like we didn't have a, a massive storage of it uh we didn't have like a like a marketing department would have like months of that stuff planned in advance whereas for us we just figured at some point the easiest thing for us to do would be announce the game and here's the demo yeah uh, here's yeah so uh that's kind of what our strategy so our announcement happened today and well, no, our, just... uh, i guess yeah that that's kind of what we're, we went wide with it because we had the we started talking to people about it last week but this is the our bigger trailer and started pushing it yeah more on social media yeah so that's uh that's where we're at so we're we're now trying to really really push this thing out there uh mm-hmm. get people playing it get, get the demo in hands and uh yeah we're getting it's it's mm-hmm. looking pretty good right now yeah like it's still on an upward trajectory so yeah pretty happy with that mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. yeah i shouldn't really talk about the other the other things that we were looking at because i'm not sure how well that would be received but <laughs> But yeah, the rest oh, of it, it's, it's pretty much it. So yeah, and I think uh, I think people, a lot of people, are kind of understanding that we're we're a small dev team. We're oh, not yeah, for a sure. giant play studio that has the budget to do these things. So yeah, and it's ask. it's the thing is too. It's like it's early access. So like I said, J- Jeff and I played Valheim together, and like I looked at uh, like I played Baldur's Gate three, and it's like games are buggy and incomplete. They're expected to be that way. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also yeah. think that it, it has evolved a lot since when early access first came out or the green light first came mm-hmm. out. 
So people are a lot more, gamers are a lot more understanding of what things are in the state they're in when they come mm -hmm. out. Whereas I think when early access first was announced on Steam, everyone expected a, a, like a highly a polished game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Not really that's perfect. Cool. cool. Anyway. Yeah, I think if, if we don't have any more questions, well, I don't know how many people are in the chat because uh, Ilrith uh, called it a night, so I guess we can sure. too. Yep. <laughs> Asking for permission. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're, uh... okay. Yeah. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week for release. Yeah. For release. Do we have yeah. a party? <laughs> if we, are we allowed? I don't know if we're allowed. <laughs> All right. We'll get back to you on that. Good night, everybody. Good night.